as a business owner, if you're contemplating setting up a captive, it's important to understand the different taxations of captive insurance companies. In this video, we're going to talk about the taxation of 831A insurance companies. Eight thirty one is the section of the IRS code. You may have heard eight thirty one A, eight thirty one B, but eight thirty one is the section of the tax code that talks about what is the taxation on a an insurance company other than a life insurance company. So this really has to do with all property casualty companies, whether it's an eight thirty one A, eight thirty eight thirty one B. So eight thirty one A taxation is the taxation on regular insurance companies. So a regular insurance company takes in premium dollars. Think of your AIGs, Liberty, Zurichs of the world. They take in premium dollars as taxable income, but they get a deduction for any expenses they have, any claims they've paid, anything that the actuaries say they need to keep in reserves, and then there's this incurred but not reported, IBNR. So that's the insurance company's way of saying, well, we have claims, we just don't know when they're going to report them to us. So if you take a company like AIG, let's say they took in $100 million and they had $50 million in claims. If they had $10 million in expenses, now that's $60 million. But yet the actuaries say they need to keep $30 million in reserves for, for potential claims for this coming year, five years, 10 years, 50 years. So they get to deduct that $30 million. And then the remaining $10 million, that's where the incurred but not reported comes in. They say, well, we have claims, we just don't know when they're gonna report it to us. So the actuaries say that they need to keep that $10 million for claims that they know they have that they just don't know when they'll be reported to them. So in that case, they took $100 million in income and $100 million in deductions against it, so they don't have any tax it that they owe on their insurance company. Now, when those res reserves are released back into the company, because those claims don't materialize, at that point, they pay taxes on their income. But that allows them to basically take their profit and keep kicking that can down the road by saying they have more and more and more claims. It's interesting. I came across this book, and this is what got me interested. I'll probably date myself with it, but this is Andrew Tobias. This was written in the late 70s. It's called The Invisible Bankers, and it says everything the insurance industry never wanted you to know. And it's a fascinating read because it goes through how insurance companies are able to accumulate dollars year after year after year and not pay taxes on them. That's when the whole AIG too big to fail that happened in 2008. Is it, it was at that point that most people started to realize how much money the insurance companies were able to accumulate. Warren Buffett, Berkshire Hathaway, people known as one of the best investors in the world. Uh, Harvard Business Review did a study of Warren Buffett and they found that almost 75% of his net worth was a direct result of owning insurance companies. Because if I invest in a certain stock and he invests in a certain stock, I have to pay taxes when I sell it or when it has a capital gain or a dividend. Inside of his insurance companies, he doesn't because of the tax structure of those insurance companies. So that's just a brief explanation of how 831As work. Now it'll be important to contrast that against 831Bs because when most people hear about captives, they think of 831Bs, but we do both 831As and 831Bs. Thank you for watching this video and I'd recommend you go to our website, riskmgmtadvisors.com, and at the top, we have an assessment tool. So you can click on the assessment and 
quickly determine if you're a business owner, you put in your information, it'll tell you whether or not a captive insurance company is right for you. If you're a client's advisor, you can put in your client's information and it'll tell you a captive insurance company is right for your client or not right for your client, but most importantly, these are the reasons why. So if you have any questions, feel free to put that down below. We continually monitor this and I look forward to seeing you on our next video. Please give us feedback. Thank you.